All right, the last part of section 12.1 is on geometric sequences. The last video we talked about arithmetic sequences, which are probably by far the most popular type of sequence you will see. A geometric sequence is maybe the second most popular. Now, let's review a little bit. An arithmetic sequence was when you add or subtract a common difference, whatever that is, letter D, over and over to produce a sequence. Ar arithmetic is like arithmetic, which you learned in kindergarten and first grade. Well, then what's a geometric sequence? A geometric sequence is when you multiply or divide by a common ratio common ratio over and over to produce a sequence. So memorize that. You're going to see this in your college entrance exams. Arithmetic is add and subtract. Geometric is multiply or divide. Now, just like the arithmetic ones, there are formulas for recursive and explicit. Now, the common ratio is called the letter R. In a recursive formula for any geometric sequence, the nth term is equal to the common ratio R times the prior term, a sub n minus 1. That's it. It's a very simple formula. So make sure you write that down and highlight that in your notes. And the first term is always just the first term. There's nothing special there. But that's recursive. That's the formula for any geometric sequence. That's the recursive formula. The explicit formula for any geometric sequence is also relatively simple. The nth term is equal to the first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. That's it. For geometric sequences, that is your explicit formula. So please pause the video if you need to and copy those two formulas down and highlight them in your notes. Now, let's look at a few examples. The geometric sequence, 3, 6, 12, 24. Ask yourself, what's the pattern? Well, hopefully you notice that it's you're multiplying by 2. That means 2 is your R value, your common ratio. So, if I needed to write a recursive rule for this pattern of numbers, a sub 1, the first term is 3, and any successive term, a sub n is equal to the common ratio 2 times a to the n minus 1 subscript, a sub n minus 1. That's your recursive rule for this problem. Very simple. The explicit rule, if I go back a slide, I need the first term and I need the common ratio. Well, very simply, the nth term is equal to the first term 3 times the common ratio 2 to the n minus 1 power. That's it. Now I can prove that. Let's say we wanted to figure out the fourth term in our pattern. This is the fourth term. Let's say we didn't know it's 24. Well, what I would do is I would put a 4 where the n is right there. So if I would write a 4 there, I would get 3 times 2 to the 4 minus 1 power. Well, this comes out to be the number 3. So 2 to the 3rd power is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. Wow, it works. That agrees with what it says right there. Example 2. 360 to 120 to 40 to 40 thirds etc. Well, what's the common ratio? 
What's happening? Well, it looks like we're dividing by 3. Now, we don't want to write divide by 3 as my r value. My common ratio r, you can't write it divide by 3. But dividing by 3 is the same as timesing by a third. You need to know that. r, then, would be 1 third. So, my recursive rule for 360, 120, 40, etc. The first term is 360, and my nth term is equal to the common ratio, one-third, times the prior term, a sub n minus 1. Very simple. The explicit rule, the nth term is equal to the first term, which is 360, times the common ratio, one-third, to the n minus 1 power. And that's how you would generate any nth term in this sequence. That's it. That's how you write recursive and explicit rules for geometric sequences. Now, what if we're missing a term? It says, find the missing term to complete the geometric sequence. It tells you it's geometric. Well, in order to do this, just like on the arithmetic video, there is what we call the geometric mean. When there is only one term missing between the two, the geometric mean basically says take the two numbers on either side of it. I'm sorry, this number is supposed to be a 3. This number is supposed to be a 3. Please fix that. Take the numbers on either side of it which is 48 times 3, and take the square root of the answer, and that will be your number in between. Well, 48 times 3 is 144, and the square root of 144 is 12. That's our number in between, and that should com complete our geometric mean, which I believe it does, because 48 divided by 4 is 12, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. Constant pattern, and there we go. Last, what happens if there's a bunch of missing terms in between? It says, complete the following geometric sequence by finding the missing values. Well. The geometric mean will not work for this one. So what we need to do is go back to the explicit formula, and we need to use the explicit formula and fill in what we know to find our common ratio. Now, if I write this out, what do we know? Well, first of all, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, we have five terms in this problem. This is the fifth term. So n is going to be equal to 5. Well, if n is 5, then that means our fifth term, a sub 5, is 324. So I have to put 324 where this is, right here. We know our first term is 4, and then I have r. And we know n is 5 to the 5 minus 1 power. Well, if I simplify that, I get 324 equals 4 times r to the 4th power. Now, I solve that. Well, first of all, I divide by 4. So 324 divided by 4 is 81, which is equal to r to the 4th power. Now, how do you solve r to the fourth power? On your calculator, you have a button called math. And underneath math, you have a key that looks like the nth root. So to get rid of the fourth power, what we need to do is find the fourth root of 81. Because the power of 4 and the fourth root will cancel out. Well, when you do that, you find out r is equal to 3. So r is 3 is my common ratio. So now I go back up here, and all I do is multiply every number by 3. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 3 is 36. 36 times 3 is 81. And 81 times 3 is 324. And I have completed my geometric sequence. 
If you have further questions about geometric sequences, let's discuss them in class, but that wraps up this video.